and my generation casually mentions World War II from the perspective, well, that America and its allies won. But after reading my grandmother's war diary and my mother's letters from overseas duty, there was no such certainty for them. February 3, 1943, the year which has gone since we were catapulted into war by the bombing of Pearl Harbor, has been so confused, so strange, so filled with new ideas, new ways, so foreign to our old ways, that I haven't had time to write, but I find I must now for my own satisfaction. And who knows, it may interest someone to read what I'm thinking and experiencing long after I'm gone. So much for preamble. <laughs> they had sounded a red alert. There were planes overhead. But Marge and I were so new at actually participating in this war that we were incapable of realizing that these were life and death matters. We had closed the Red Cross Club across from us, but Sergeants Walsh and Edwards were standing in the door of the club. Suddenly everything was bright as day as our entire airfield was bathed in brilliant light from innumerable flares that were floating down around us. Sergeant Walsh mentioned that usually the flares were followed by bombs and we all better get to the slit ditches. The next thing I knew I was spitting and sputtering and saying, Marge, I got a mouthful of dirt. Not, are you okay or what happened? Both of us were lying on our stomachs, covered with dirt, cement, and debris. Two inches from my head was a six by six foot piece of concrete. Across from us, total devastation, where once the 60 foot Red Cross Club had stood. Somehow we both knew there was no reason to call out for Sergeants Walsh and Edwards. They were standing almost exactly where the bomb had landed. Two things flashed into my head. First, the Red Cross supervisor saying, Ruth, we're sending you to an airfield that is the target of frequent bombing attacks, but we think you can handle it. And second, what in God's name am I doing here? Thank <laughs> you.